Well, good morning, folks. Uh, welcome back to the channel. My name's Lee, your virtual airline pilot, back with you again for the first of this week's reviews. Um, we are in Europe, we're in Germany, and you're looking at Stuttgart International Airport in Germany, Echo Delta Delta Sierra. This is a payware scenery by RD Presets, and the latest version, version 1.1.0, for the PC version of Flight Simulator 2020. The download is 1.15 gig and it installs at 4.83 gigs, so close to 5 gigs, quite an extensive scenery. It's currently available from both Sim Market and the Contrail shop if uh, you use that. I'll give you the Sim Market price, currently €21.59, which equates to $23.18 or £18.73 UK. As ever, US and UK prices are all estimates from the Euro, and they include tax or VAT, which of course may vary depending on the country you're in when you make your purchase. I should say right off the bat, there have been quite a few sort of in and sort of here and there reviews about this, some pretty negative, um, some fairly a lot of complaints about frame rate. Um, to be honest, I've looked over this extensively and I've had no issues at all, no stutters, no frame rate problems at all. Um, my computer system is an Intel i9-9900 processor. I upgraded my RAM from 32 to 64 gigs, um, and it's on um, a 2 terabyte Samsung Evo SSD. In Flight Sim 2020 is installed on that. Um, my graphics card is an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2080. It's a smaller version. So, you know, it's not my, my system isn't massively powerful considering today's computer systems um, but I'm still moving around the airport and not really getting any sort of stutters or issues at all so I can't really duplicate those those problems what I can say is is a very very nice airport extremely detailed better than anything out there I'll say that right off the bat there's just so much in the scenery but we'll get into that one other thing i should tell you is you must remember to disable the default asobo stuttgart um, in the content manager and uh, what i'll do now is i'll show you a quick video about uh, about, how, about how that's done okay folks um if you're going to use the new rd presets stuttgart airport scenery you need to disable the default asobo microsoft scenery that's installed and here's how to do it. Here we are at the desktop. If you select profile and select content, man content manager and here you'll see the various world updates and bits and pieces. We're looking for world update Germany. So let's move this down and there it is there. So world update 6 I think that is. World update 6 Germany, Austria, Microsoft go to the right of the menu here you'll see some click buttons if you click that here you'll see the various um, installations as part of that world update now obviously we scroll down we're looking for Stuttgart there it is Stuttgart Airport okay and currently you can see it's installed so select it by left clicking on it and here you can see delete. Now by the way, all this does is delete this from your community folder, or not from your community folder, all this does, it deletes it from your um, flight simulator installation. It doesn't remove it entirely from the whole sim. You can reinstall it by going back to this menu. So for the moment we're going to delete it. Click delete, left click, are you sure? Yes I am. Just wait a minute while it makes its mind up about what you're doing. And there we go. So now if you check the list, Stuttgart's at the top, but it shows us not installed. So that's fine. So we return to the main menu and then quit to the desktop. So there we've deleted the um, default Asobo Stuttgart Airport. Next thing to do is to install the RD Presets one. So you just simply install it in the usual way and now ultimately what you'll end up with 
is this folder here. Here you can see the RD presets scenery is installed. So we've removed the default Osobo Airport and we've installed the RD presets and so when you select it you'll get back to the uh, um, the image I, I've just showed you. So I hope that helps. Um, that works for the Microsoft um, Steam version and the um, MS Store version. I'm not sure about Xbox because I'm not certain about how the installation goes. But removal and install, installation or reinstallation of default sceneries works the same way. So there you go, that was how to disable the def a default scenery so you could use this new Stuttgart scenery. Let's look at the list of features. We have realistic replica of Stuttgart Airport. We have animated jetways. Completely custom modeling and texturing with PBR textures on the whole airport. Full custom high replica 3D interior, including 3D passengers. More than a thousand clutter objects on the apron and surrounding areas. Custom ground textures, faithfully recreating the asphalt differences just as in reality. Performance optimizations, accurate night lighting, custom taxiway signage and ground traffic. So you've got quite a lot there. I mean, they PBR'd and textures everything on the airport. Um, I mean, I can understand, therefore, how some people might have frame rate issues. But it is all about optimizing your, um, your system here. As I said, I've got an i9 processor, but I don't think that's going to be a huge difference. Um, and as you see, when we tour the airport, um, I don't seem to really experience much issues. So there's your feature list. Remember, um, disable the default Stuttgart Airport from a Sobo before you use the scenery. Let's talk history now. So history, Stuttgart International Airport, formerly known as Flughafen Stuttgart Erdingen, Echo Delta Delta Sierra, is a public use airport owned and operated by Flughafen Stuttgart GmbH or GmbH as they say in German. It is located just 8 miles or 13 kilometers south of the city of Stuttgart, the capital of the German state of Baden-Württemberg. It's christened in honour of Stuttgart's former mayor, Manfred Rommel, and is the sixth busiest airport in Germany with over 11 million passengers having passed through its doors in 2018. The whole facility covers approximately a thousand acres, or 400 hectares, of which a large area is green space. The airport was built in 1939 to replace Boblingen Airport. In 1945, the United States Army took over the airport until returning it to the German authorities in 1948. For the duration of the Cold War, the runway and facilities were shared with the United States Army who operated helicopters, the Grumman DV-1 Mohawk and other fixed-wing aircraft as Echtedingen Army Airfield on the southern portion of the airport. The US Army still maintains a small helicopter base, Stuttgart Army Airfield on the southern side of the airport which it shares with Baden-Württemberg State Police Helicopter Wing. The police helicopter wing falls under the control of Stuttgart Police Department and has six modern helicopters based at Stuttgart with two in Serlingen. The airport was expanded after World War II. The original 1938 terminal was finally replaced in 2004 and there are now four terminals with a maximum capacity of approximately 12 million passengers. Politicians, town planners and nearby residents have been arguing for years about the construction of a second runway. However, in June 2008, Minister President Gunther Oetlinger announced that for the next 8 to 12 years, no second runway would be built and that the restrictions for night operations would remain in place. And I should say that, uh, and we'll cover this in the runways, um, there are no jet operations, no takeoffs between 2300 11 pm and 0600 at 6 o'clock in the morning local time at Stuttgart Airport. So if you want to get in, you really need to get in sort of before 11 pm. Um, and if you want to take off, you essentially can't take off in the night hours. In July 2014, it was announced that the airport would be named Flughafen Stuttgart, Manfred Rommel Flughafen. In September 2016, the airport unveiled, unveiled new branding and corporate design, changing its official name from Flughafen Stuttgart to Stuttgart Airport.
Dutla Airport consists of four passenger terminals now, which have a separate check-in facilities and entrances, but are directly connected to each other and share a single airside area, which features eight jet bridges as well as about two dozen bus boarding stands. Terminals 2 and 3 are mainly used by Eurowings and Turkish Airlines, whilst Terminal 1 is used by Lufthansa and Star Alliance partners who also have counters in Terminal 1. Terminal 3 is used by TUI Fly and KLM. Terminal 4 is unlike the other three terminals, a separate and very basic equipped building to the east of Terminals 1 to 3, but also connected to them by a walkway. It features 17 more check-in counters as well as several bus boarding gates and is used mostly for holiday charter operations. In March 2018, the airport administration announced that Terminal 4 will be entirely rebuilt and expanded in the coming years. So that does it for history. This is quite a, new, a unique airport, especially in the way it's constructed. Um, and as you can see from this high level shot, it's very extensive, uh, right next to one of the main motorways here too, which goes right past the airport. So that does it for history. Now let's look at the runways in, in depth. So runways, as you can see, I've lowered the lighting. It's now 5 p.m. local time. It's the uh, 6th of November, 2023. So you can see we're into winter now. So Stuttgart Airport operates a single runway 2507 measuring 10,974 feet or 3,345 meters and it's made from concrete. The airport lies at an elevation of 1,276 feet or 389 meters and sits within the GMT UTC plus one hour time zone. Now like the UK and much of Europe, Germany does observe daylight saving time. But we're back on Zulu now, and so is Germany. So we're currently, Stuttgart, currently one hour ahead of the UK, as it is all the time. When we move forward, Germany moves forward. There's always one hour difference. So let's look at the runway features. Um, and both ends of this runway, 2507, feature high intensity runway lighting, centerline lighting, airfield lighting system with sequence flashing lights, touchdown zone lighting, runway end identifier lighting system and precision approach path indicators on the runway left side. And as you can see, RD presets have got it absolutely right. Here's the sequence flashing lights. There's the center line, there's the touchdown zone lighting, Pappy's on the left. You have it all here as per the charts. And it's the same at the other end, which we'll look at at the, at the moment. So approach options, again, both ends of the runway feature an instrument landing system and it's certified to category 3A low visibility operations. You also have RNP and VOR approach options. So guys, look at the charts um, and you've got plenty of options for coming in here. As I've said before, bear in mind the airport has night flying restrictions, no takeoffs by jet aircraft between 2300 and 0600 local time so pilots consult your charts. So let's take a quick look at the other end, runway 225. So here we are looking at the other end of the runway and as you can see everything as it should be exactly the same as the other end, top end 07. Um, I can't quite see the flashing lights here, let's get down a bit lower. Right, as you can see I've got down a little bit lower, we have the approach lighting system. This end doesn't seem to feature the flashing lights, not really sure why. So all pretty much as it should be, except um, for the fact that runway 25 here seems to um, be missing the flashing lights. Let's get right up on the threshold. So here we are right on the threshold and you can see everything's there, as I said, except the um, sequence flashing lights. Here's the runway end identifier lighting system. There's your touchdown zone, center line, Pappy's on the left. Approach lighting system as per the chart. But uh, on this end, at least, the only issue I can find is that there's no sequence flashing lights. But apart from that, everything as it should be. So that does it for runways. Let's bring the daytime back and do a jetway test. Okay, jetway test. So here's my um, Airbus A320neo parked on stand 12. I've positioned the tug in place so we give the jetway free range. Let's give it a go and see how it, how it works. So a nice steady motion, not too fast. Jetway's moving nicely. It's nicely weathered as well, I have to say. 
there you can see the um, rotunda turning. Okay, the wheels have turned, but they've kind of gone the wrong way. Not terribly effective there. So, yeah, everything looks quite good there. Even at this turns as well, which I've not seen in any other animation. The only problem was the wheels didn't quite work the way they should. Let's get a close-up look. So from this side, that looks pretty good. It's gone through the skin a little bit, but not as much as I'd expect. It's, it's pretty impressive, actually. Let's check from the other side. So that looks okay, but it looks also as though the door has gone outside of the, uh, the jetway. Let's get inside the doorway here and have a look and, and see whether maybe it's an aircraft positioning issue. Right, this is the closest I can get without having the door sort of cut the image out because the jetway end door is actually closed. Here you can see that the jet, the doorway has actually gone through the side of the jetway rubber. But there at the bottom, it's not too bad at all. It's quite a good fit there. There at the top, it's um, a little bit sort of here and there, a bit skew if really. And there at the side, you can see sort of gaps in the, uh, in the rubbering really. I mean, jetway's nice, it's animated, it, it works. I don't think it's an issue really with the uh, positioning of the aircraft. Maybe let's have a look. So with the jetway pulled away and the aircraft there, this is spawned directly from the menu. You can see actually there are no um, aircraft marking signs on the tarmac. You've just got the yellow line. And there you can see the end of the yellow line. So we've just got yellow lines. We haven't got aircraft position markings, which doesn't really help you. Okay, so let's retract the jetway now. So the hood moves, but not by much. And again, you get the delay before the jetway itself starts to move. These wheels are kind of turning the wrong way, really. That's the only issue. And there we are, jetway's back where it should be. Um, okay, so no real problems. It's no worse than any other jetway. I would like to see aircraft markings on the lines here. I don't know if they exist at the real airport, maybe somebody can tell me. But it would be nice to see proper aircraft markings. So you could then taxi or position the aircraft when you come in and maybe the jetway might fit better. But apart from that, I mean that that's okay, that works. You've got one jetway that works and visually the jetway is quite nice. And it's quite a nice change to see this turret actually turning as well, which I haven't seen in many jetways. So there you go, that was the jetway test. Let's get down and dirty on this airport proper and have a look and see what we've got. So there you go, that does it for jetways. Let's start the main tour now. Uh, there's a lot to see here, so I'm gonna try and keep this short, but try and give you a good overview of what we're looking at. There's a hell of a lot in this scenery which leads me to think that the price is more than justified, but then you can judge yourself. So let's start a tour across the airside ramp from west to east. We've got runway 0007 threshold to our right. There's the terminal complex ahead of us. As you can see, car parks, vehicles, so much detail here. There's the fence line, loads of clutter and it all looks so realistic, beautifully modelled. There's my aircraft there. I mean, as you can see, it, it just looks fantastic. you even got lead-in cars down there, look. Airfield operations vehicles. I mean, the modelling is just excellent. As you can see, airside ramp, and again, as you can see, notice my zone drone cameras moving perfectly okay. No stutters, no real issues at all, despite the detail. And to be honest, at the moment, I haven't actually got the latest video drivers for my NVIDIA card. I've got an earlier version I need to update. Here's the fuel farm, and look, even those fuel farm buildings are textured. Here we've got corporate jet and general aviation area. Again, it's all been nicely done. The motorway's been detailed as well on the other side. 
all done 3D so it all looks really good. Okay, you got one aircraft tail sticking into the building here, yeah, just a, a minor issue. But look, everything is weathered and textures. There's the fire station. Just have a quick look there. That's really nice. You got two fire tenders there, so they're sticking out the doors. I thought for a moment they were stuck in the building, but they're not. And if you look at the building here, look, you've got parallaxing. There's no internal here, but they've got high resolution parallaxing. Um, this is evident all over the airport where they've not done internal building and this is really really good again it's higher resolution let's go a bit closer so as you can see here we're right up to the building looking through the glass and look it's high res so this all looks very effective even close up so kudos to the guys for doing that so we just carry on our tour here you've got snow carrying equipment this is the snow base Again, the buildings are weathered. You can see the weathering marks, rain marks on the building. And here's the motorway. Again, it's been done 3D. It's not been left a photo reel. And so it works. And there we go. Just wanted to go quick down the motorway to see if that sign had been done, and it has. So let's just follow the motorway land side towards the terminal complex. Okay, one or two bushes there encroaching into the roadway, but um, ah, it's great. Again, you can see the buildings are beautifully modelled. So here you've got the car parks, filled with cars, petrol station down there, oh McDonald's as well, fancy a burger, and again look at the windows, parallaxing, okay the cars are a bit here and there, but to some extent that's to do with the Sobo I think. So we're just quickly touring landside. I mean, look at the detail. The foliage particularly looks good. So here we are landside of the main terminal. There is internal work done, but for the moment I'm just going to Go past here and let you have a look. Plenty of people, taxis, and you can see in through the terminal buildings there. It's beautiful. Can't wait to see this in the darkness hours. It's very, very nice indeed. So a multi-storey car park, and again look to the left there, parallaxing windows. Here we've got a couple of cranes where you've got work going on. And look, I mean all the cars parked properly in their spaces. Very nice indeed. So as we go further land side here, Wonderful. Again, look at the parallaxing on the windows to the buildings to the left and ahead of us. And again, you know, notice the no juddering or stuttering on the camera, on the drone camera as I sort of go along here. And a quick overview from air, from landside here, looking towards airside as we pass over the airport itself. A 
Okay, and get some very, very slight stutters, but not, not really much to complain about up here. So let's have a little tour of the airside ramp close up and the roadway. Again, look to the left airside, you can see passengers in the terminal building. It's really good. Okay, a little bit of stuttering here. But you know, when you park up, you won't have this issue. You won't have a problem here. This is really just for you to see. And to be honest, it looks great. And again, look, you've got parallaxing on the windows there. Making it look real. Very impressed with that. So let's go airside into the terminal building and have a look and see what we've got. I mean, that's pretty impressive. The uh, figures, the passenger figures are really good quality. You can see we're close up and there's no real blurring or anything like that. All looking pretty good and it would appear you could probably go down that jetway. So let's have a slow tour. You've got this misted glass effect on the right there that blurs the passengers until you get past it. And you've got changing signs on the left too, which is another really good feature. Smoking Lounge. My colleague, Neil, has been to Stuttgart many times. It's one of his favorite airports in the sim. And he told me that every gate or lounge has a smoking area. So if you're a smoker, I mean, this is really, really good for you. So you see that sign up there, it said last call, it's now changed. And it's gone changed again. So that's a nice, interesting feature. And here's the children's play area. Very, very nice. So we're just going to travel through here. That shouldn't be allowed. You should not be able to go from land side straight into an airside gate room. So there must either be a security check here or there's a, a mistake with this part of the building. You go from land side from checking through security into the airside gate lounges. So this is a um, an anomaly. This is the only real anomaly I can find so far. So as we travel over there, plenty of passengers. Unfortunately, no check-in staff that I can see. You know, if you're going to have this amount of passengers, you do need some check-in staff. Behind the counters. And there are none. But as you can see, a really beautifully modelled terminal interior. And again, loads of people and passengers are, are not affecting the drone at all. Frame rate is perfectly acceptable. But I have to stress, you know, this isn't going to give you a problem if all you're doing is flying in and parking up. Some high resolution shops on the left bit of parallaxing here and there this all looks really good because it's all done at a good high resolution and makes it believable this is a fantastic scenery um, and it just shows RD presets just getting better and better very nicely done indeed let's just take a little look up this way there's departures there's a security check below And just, you know, they've done an amazing job in the terminal.
So much to explore and see in here. Not going to be able to see it all. Don't want to spend too much time, otherwise it could be too long a video, but let's pop outside here. You've got observation deck with various little aircraft and people looking out. It's fantastic. It's, it's just very, very nice. Okay, so there was a tour, brief tour daytime to look at quite a bit of detail. Again, there's a lot I haven't shown you, but you're going to have to explore yourself um, because this could unfortunately turn into a really, really long video if I went into everything. But there's so much to see. Let's turn the lighting down now to dusk and have a look at the lighting situation here. Okay, five minutes to 5 p.m. in the evening and uh, we've... Uh, the lighting came on about five minutes ago, but I just wanted to get to this point so you could see how subtle it is. I mean, the lighting is beautiful. So we have green centerline lights on the taxi, which, which is a huge help. Some lovely, beautiful, subtle lighting down here. We'll have a close look at the stands in a minute. All the various signs are lit, as you would expect. Um, and of course, you can see into the terminal as well. And again, the lighting goes on out here. And from the look of it, the highway sign is just lit as well, which is another plus. So there's a high level view showing runway 07 threshold, which is here. Okay, we've got vehicles crossing the runway, but I haven't seen anything go down the runway, which is good. While we're here, let's go on to the military apron on this side and have a look and see what you've got. So as you can see, we've also got blue airfield edge lights, centerline lighting. The ground lighting is, is excellent. We'll have a look at some of the signage. Somebody asked me recently whether I can check all the all the taxiway signs. Actually, I can't because it, they're not listed on the charts. So all we can do is have a look at what you have here and see if you have enough to be able to help you to get to wherever you need to go. So again, some nice subtle lighting. I mean, it looks lovely. It all looks nice. Okay, so you've got a cargo section here. All looks really good. Yeah, this is definitely the cargo point. It's marked on the charts as a military apron, which is at the other end. And I'm just going to go off airport a little bit because there are some off airport features as well for you to look at. I mean, look at this. I mean, that's a stunning building. That's the control tower. <laughs> it seems to be a way off the airport. But anyhow, let's get a closer look. So first of all, there, seen from the outside, you can see the tower is fully developed inside. Let's get in and have a look and see what it looks like. Well, that's pretty impressive. All of the TV screens and monitors, everything has been modelled right down to the field glasses here. <laughs> and again, you've got high quality people models here, which is good. I mean, that's great. I like that. I really do. And as you can see, you've got modelling inside this part here and also parallaxing of a high resolution on the windows here that give the impression that this building is, um, <laughs> is occupied. Very, very impressed with that. So a quick tour westwards back over the buildings we've just looked at. It's not bad at all. It's, it's very, very nice. The detail is amazing. So this is the military section here, right in the corner. So here's a look at the stand. Here's my aircraft parked on uh, stand 12. Well, it's very nice indeed. I mean, the lighting is coming from the correct source. There's enough of it here. It's, it's really good. Again, you look at the terminals, you can see inside. So we'll just take a quick pass over some of the ramp here at dusk and you can see, oh, it's lovely. It's really nice. 
You can see the passengers and the interior of the terminals there through the windows. The lighting is very nice indeed. More parallax in there to the left, can you see? It's just stunning. It's really impressive. And I really like this sort of subtle hangar lighting you've got here too. come in landside. Unfortunately the road signs on the highway aren't lit which is a real pity. There's McDonald's. Again minimal lighting but as you get close there you can see inside which is good. There's a balance here between frame rate and lighting which I like and they've obviously worked hard at this. So you've got some parallaxing some buildings that are lit also got the sounds as you can hear there. I mean they've done a pretty good job. You see you've got some parallaxing or lit parallaxing that you can see on some of the buildings but not all of them. And I'm certain it's done in terms for, for, for performance optimization. As we swing back airside here, you can see the sun's getting right down now. So a quick look at some of the taxiways and signage out here. But look, look at the subtle lighting down here. It's brilliant, it really is. So as you can see, um, centerline lighting, absolutely as you would expect taxiways beautifully modelled. So as we come out towards the threshold of runway 07 here, I mean excellent signage, really got no problems at all, done a nice job. And there you go, there's the threshold of 07, you've got the Cat 23 signage, here's an ops vehicle that's going to cross, and you have working wigwags. And to be honest, I really like these blue edge lights, I like this design, it looks good. Um, and you've got this nice little glow, it all adds to the ambience as you taxi out here and you look out the captain's window. <laughs> it's going to be nice, I like it. And there's a quick look at the um, centerline lights, the green lights. Very nicely done. I, again, I like the way this is modelled. It just looks good. And a quick tour. There you can see the uh, other hangars and the general aviation section. Some very nice lighting. Okay, so that was dusk. Let's turn the lighting down to night time now and see how it is. Okay, 10 p.m. local time, and you've got an hour to get your aircraft out of this airport before the, it shuts to jet traffic. But here you can see a really nice view. Uh, the lighting has come up very nicely over all of the stands. Taxiways here, all of them nicely delineated with signage. You're not going to have any problems landing here in the dark. There's the cargo apron down there and the military section up here. Just watch this car to make sure it crosses the runway and not travels down it. There she goes crossing the runway and I like the fact that the car headlights and taillights are working. As we look down to the other end there, here you now we've got this tungsten lighting, which is a feature at many airports, um, and you get this kind of nice glow, which is quite nice, I quite like it. Again, if you look at the runway here, taxiways down here, I mean, it all looks really good. So let's get a close look at the stand. So here's my aircraft parked on the stand, and you can see the glow from my uh, wing lights, which is quite nice as well. 
So as you look across the stands, I mean, it does look a little bit sort of, I mean, it's not as bright as I expected it to be, but it's good enough, I think. So if we look at the stand there, there's my aircraft parked on stand 12. Here I've got the tug connected. Here are the centerline lights, so you'll be using your nose gear light to follow these. And then round about here, you'll see the sandstone in the, in, on the concrete and you can simply make the turn and go into the stand. So, okay, this isn't as bright as you might expect as it is on some airports, but it's, it's pretty good enough. Um, perhaps my friend Neil can tell me what it's like at night and see whether this is accurate. But it does look good. Let's have a quick look inside the terminal. So here we are looking from our air side to the right there and straight ahead and at the bottom, you know, you've got, um, it looks great. It really does look good from the outside. Again, from the outside looking in, just wanted to see what it looks like through the glass and it's very nice and bright. And here we are inside, as you can see, no, no sort of light problems at all in the terminal here. So let's have a look at this end. Again, no light issues at all inside, but it does look nice. And there's the higher level part. There you can see the children's play area straight through the glass layer. Let's have a very quick look land side. And as you can see, I mean, it looks great. You've got people, um, there's a, an ambience and atmosphere because everything is that's needed is here. And we look down in the other direction, you've got people standing outside and they're downstairs inside the terminal. Very quick look at, arrive at the um, land side check-in and arrivals area. And there you go, really nice view. You look at the shops on the right and the left, they're photographic, but they're high resolution, so they work. So there you've got a very, very busy check-in. You've got McDonald's upstairs. The detail is incredible, and to be honest, it doesn't seem to be affecting my frame rate at all. So as I said, bear in mind guys, um, you have to disable the default Asobo Stuttgart so that this works without any issues. Um, make sure your drive, the drive that you've got Flight Sim 2020 on, make sure it's defragged properly. Um, clear out all your clutter files. Use a program like CCleaner. Um, and that will basically make things run a little bit better. But um, yeah, you know, this, it, it, for the pilots among you, you're going to just see what you see airside and that will be fine. Um, but the, for those of you that want to explore, and I've said this before and I'll say it again, Flight Sim 2020 gives us the ability or gives developers the ability to do things like this. And why not? It looks great. It, it brings the airport to life and it gives you something to explore while you're here before you take off and depart. I think it's wonderful, I really do. So a quick internal shot there showing you the McDonald's area. Um, this lovely aeroplane, or two aeroplanes here fly up and from the roof. Um, you know, it all looks great. Let me have a quick look at security, which is my area of expertise. So there you can see security, I mean it looks fine. And look at the flight departures board. Everything is a high resolution, nice and sharp. So that was night time, let's bring the dawn up. So 25 past seven in the morning, and as you can see, the sun's coming up to the sort of behind us, and this is, you've got this lovely red glow on the buildings. I really like these, these effects, and in any event, when you set it to dawn, the quality of texturing on the airport structure will reflect that dawn and, and you'll see how good it is. And here you can see it, it just looks great. And there you've got the cargo area on the south side of the airfield and the sun's coming up behind the hills in the distance. Okay, 8.15 in the morning, a little bit later on now and um, time to wrap up this review and give you my thoughts. Okay, firstly, there is so much to see at this airport. Once you land and park up, if you've a mind to, yeah, get the drone camera out, slow it down and just go and have a look. The detail is incredible. Frame rates, okay, I'll accept that you might get some frame rate issues. There have been a few complaints on sim market reviews um, where people have complained about frame rates as low as nine frames a second. I haven't experienced that. Um, okay, I have an i9 processor and I've doubled my memory to 64 gigs, 
but I don't think that makes a huge difference. My graphics card isn't the latest 4080, it's the 2080 Ti um, NVIDIA card, and I don't have the latest um, drivers on, and I'm still getting quite decent um, frame rates here with the drone camera. You've seen what I've seen you, shown you, um, and um, I don't see too many issues. That said, this is a highly detailed airport. It's fantastic. It's a good example to show you what Flight Sim 2020 can give us in terms of realism, visual realism, ambience, atmosphere. You know, it blows away so many other things that I used to see in P3D and FSX. It really is. Um, and it's a wonderful airport. So, yeah, look very carefully about what system you've got um, before you buy this. But make no mistake, it's a wonderful scenery. I have excellent frame rates and no problems at all. So, you know, you can use the scenery in all its glory. I've got everything turned up um, and it works. And I think I've got the i9 CPU. It's not the fastest, certainly not now. Um, and it looks great. Is it worth the price? <laughs> Absolutely. 22 euros or 23, just under 24 dollars US, including tax, remember for the amount of work and effort and development that's gone into this airport that's been packed into this little airport area it's wonderful terrain wise it fits beautifully I haven't seen any runway bumps or issues like that um, but visually it's 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 beautiful it's um one of the airports that sets the standard and you know you've got to look at people like RD presets up there they really have done a job here so, yep, wrapping it up, just to let you know, you know, make sure, as I've said earlier in the review, make sure you def disable the default Sobo Microsoft Stuttgart before you install this. Installation's quite good. It does take a minute or two before the install routine starts. So if you click install and it sits there for a minute, don't assume that it's not working. Um, I think mine took a minute and 10 seconds before the actual install started to run. So it does install just give it some time um, and as I said um, it's a wonderful scenery it's one of the highest detailed sceneries I've seen it's at a really competitive price for such a workload that's been done here but yeah look at the system you've got carefully and to decide before you buy this but if you can run it yeah do it it's, it's wonderful it really is so there you go folks, Stuttgart International Airport in Germany, Heco Delta Delta Sierra, Pay West Scenery by RD Presets. This is version 1.1.0 and is for the PC version of Flight Sim 2020. Download is 1.15 gig, installs at 4.83 gigs, so it's fairly substantial. Available from Sim Market and you can also get it from the Contrail shop if you use that facility. Sim market price €21.59, Euros and 59 cents, which equates to $23.18 US or £18.73 pence UK. As ever, US and UK prices are all estimates taken from the Euro and they do include tax or VAT, which may vary depending on your country of purchase. A really amazing airport um, and yeah, it's time to fly in here, I think. Don't fly into Germany too much and maybe it's time I started. So folks, this is Lee, your virtual airline pilot, wrapping up the first of this week's reviews. Thank you for joining me. If you've been on the fence about this, um, and I know some people have because of some of the reviews elsewhere, I hope this has shown you what it's got um, and why possibly some of the frame rate hits people are getting. But as you can see, I've had a pretty fluid movement across all of this airport, pretty much everywhere, with hardly any stutters here and there at all. Um, for me, it runs really well. As a pilot, if all you're going to do is fly in here and park up and then fly out again, it more than meets your requirements um, and you won't have frame rate issues for doing that. I think I'm pretty sure about that. Remember guys, if you're in the real world and you want to emulate real world procedures, no takeoffs after 11pm local time or before 6am local time. There's a night curfew in, in place. So thanks for joining me in this first review, folks. Um, look out for the second one. We're going to be looking at Desrecki's Designs version of Rosslaw, um, EPWR, a 
Polish airport um, and we're going to have a look at it. I mean there's a couple of others, there's a freeware and there's a version by Fly2i. We'll have a look and see um, how much of a better version, if any, the new Dzbrecki design version is. That's to come later this week. Thank you very much for joining me. I'll see you in that review. Bye for now. Take care.